a 24mm macro probe lens made by Venus Lawa as well. It's a very unique macro lens. If you're interested in homemade adult videos and you want to be creative with your perspectives, you want to film every single cavity in detail, then you will, you will want to consider this lens. Hello and welcome back to Exco Garnier Blog and Photography. I'm Steven. In today's video, I'm going to answer a very interesting question I came across in a Facebook group related to toy photography, figure photography. And you can regard this video today as a toy photography tutorial, but it is more about camera equipment, buying or choosing the right equipment for the kind of photography you do. So let's get to the question immediately. So this question, the question being asked over here, Hi everyone, which do you suppose is better for toy photography, something like a 50mm macro or like a 105mm macro? I know that wider lenses can focus closer to the subject, but then the added focal length is also considerable. Okay, I actually answered to, the, to this guy in the comments below. So let me scroll down to the comments so that I can refer to it and I don't have to rack my brains through trying to think up what to say in this video. Okay, what you guys need to know is that there are two main types of macro lenses, the longer one and the shorter one. The shorter one is usually around 50mm plus minus. There are also 40, 60, 70mm macro lenses. Those are the shorter ones. And then the longer ones are usually around 100mm. There are 90, 105 or even all the way to 150mm macro lenses out there. Which one should you go for is solely dependent on your photography style. So there is no one size fits all solution. I have heard some people saying that short focal length macro lenses like 15mm are useless because you have to be so close to your subject in order to feel the subject, the figure, it, or whatever you're photographing into the whole frame of the photo. And when you get too close, for example, to an insect, you will scare it away. So short focal length macros are useless according to these people, but those people, they are just being too narrow-minded with their views because there are so many types of macro photography out there and choice photography is just one of the so I shall give you guys a very clear guideline on what to choose based on your photography style. Remember that your choice depends on your photography style. Ideally, if you can afford it, you have a deep pocket, buy both, yes. But if you have a limited budget, you can only choose either one. You choose it based on your photography style. And here's the clear guideline I'm going to give you guys, okay? Okay. The first one is regarding the type of figures you shoot. If you shoot large figures like this one right here, right? This is considered a large figure. This is around 1 by 8 scale. None scale, but this is around 1 by 8 scale. If you shoot 1 by 8 to 1 by 6 scale figurines, which are considered large figures, you might want to consider the shorter macro lenses, 15mm, 16mm, 14mm, that kind of range. The reason being, you don't have to stay too far away from the figure. So when you shoot a large object and you use a 100 plus millimeter lens, you have to step back a lot. So in the end, you will end up physically, in, in terms of physical distance, you will end up very far away from the figure. And this presents problems to some people, especially if you have a very small room, you shoot indoors, in your own bedroom or in your own studio, you have a very small bedroom. So if you use a 100 plus millimeter lens, you have to stay back quite a considerable amount of distance from the figure. You might not have the space to do it. So you need to bear in mind what is your situation back at home. So if you shoot large figures and you have a relatively small room back at home to do your work, it is wiser to buy the shorter focal length macro lens, the 50 millimeter. However, once again, your photography style will affect your choice. If you go outdoors often and you are constantly 
spraying up dirt or water to create special effects in the photos using real water, real sand, you might want to consider using the 105mm macro lens instead because you want to keep a distance away from the figure you do not want to get too close otherwise you will spray water or dirt onto your camera. So if you are the one playing with special effects, practical effects, then the longer focal length of 105mm might be the one you want to buy. Okay, the second one is regarding doramas. For example, you do exactly like what I do. You build doramas, you build scenes for your figures. If you do that, especially for slightly larger figures, you might want to consider the shorter focal length 15mm macro as well because there really is no point using a 100 plus millimeter macro lens to shoot a drama because in longer focal length lenses, the background is very magnified. So you put in a lot of effort into building a detailed and large scene, but only a very small portion of it is visible in your photographs. So if you want more of the scene to be visible in the photograph, once again, you have to step back a lot and you might encounter space issues. So if you build dioramas like I do, the shorter focal length 15mm might be a wiser choice. So the third point, if you shoot smaller figures, for example 1 by 12 scale Figma, Revoltech, SH Figo Arts, or even as small as Lego for example, you might want to consider going for the 105mm macro lens. The reason being, you can still go for the 15mm, no problem. But when you shoot small figures, very small figures, and you go for a shorter focal length lens, it means that you have to go very close to the figure in terms of physical distance. And this is ideal if you have a very small room, naturally. But you will encounter lighting problems. When you shoot figure in a scene, in the drama scene, for example, and you're shooting small figures, you'll be setting up studio lights next to the figure. And if you get too close in terms of physical distance to your figure, what happens is that you will physically obstruct the, the light you set up for your figures and you cast shadows onto your figures when that can be completely avoided if you step back a few steps. So if you do end up getting too close to the figure to the extent you are physically blocking, obstructing the light you set up, you want a longer focal length, 100 plus millimeter, Micro lens so that you can step back a bit further and the light can hit the figure properly. So this is one thing most people don't think about until it actually happens to them and then the frustration grows. Point number four, you need to know that focal length isn't just about zooming in or out. Focal length can be used to manipulate perspective. And let me give you guys a very simple example. If you have a 1x8 scale, a large figure, and your props, your background, maybe you have some kind of fans or house in the background, your the props in the background, the drama, is too small, 1x12 scale, it is meant for 1x12 scale, but your figure is 1x8, you can go for a longer focal length lens like the 105mm macro, because long focal length lenses, they magnify the background. So your smaller than usual, background props will look larger in the final photographs. Vice versa, if you go outdoors for example, and everything in the background are life-size, right? The buildings, the cars, the mountains, and the landscape, they are all life-size, they are too big for a figure on the ground on the floor. So what can you do? In this kind of scenarios, you might want to consider buying an ultra-wide angle lens. Ultra-wide angle lenses, they are not macro lenses, but they often have very short focusing distances, so you can try that outdoors. So when you use an ultra-wide short focal length lens, like a 10 to 20 millimeter zoom lens, yes, 10 to 20, everything in the background will look very small and your figure will look very big, as if everything in the background is the same size and same scale as your figure. So this is the advantage of knowing how to manipulate focal length to create perspectives to manipulate perspectives so that they match your figure. Each focal length from the shortest to the longest one, they have their own purposes. Wide angle macro lenses actually do exist but they are fairly niche products. For example, this 15mm f4 macro by Venus Lawa, it is a macro lens 
This is something you might want to consider if you go outdoors with your figures, but not many people buy this lens unless they know how to make use of it, right? It is a very niche product. And there are also macro probe lenses like this one. This is a 24mm macro probe lens made by Venus Lawa as well. And this is a 1500 US dollar lens. Yes, it's a very unique macro lens. If you're interested in homemade adult videos and you want to be creative with your perspectives, you want to film every single cavity in detail, then you will, you will want to consider this lens. I will leave the rest to your own imaginations. So these are the main four points about choosing the right macro lens for yourself. You need to consider your photography style, the type of figures you photograph, your props, your diorama, and whether you want to manipulate your perspective. And you choose your lens based on these four main criteria. There is no one size fits all solution. So I hope that this video will be helpful to you guys. And if you do have any other additional questions regarding choosing lenses for toy figure photography, even other genres of photography, I will help you out the best I can. Just drop down a comment below and I will get back to you whenever possible. Thank you for watching this video and if you do find this video helpful, please do consider dropping down a like and subscribing to this channel, especially if you are interested in toy photography. I will see you guys once again very soon. Goodbye.